it's been, uh, this is being called the Buffett rule because it comes after Warren Buffett, the multi-billionaire owner of Berkshire Hathaway said, I end up, because I get so, of my, so much of my money from capital gains, I end up paying a lower effective tax rate than my secretary who gets her money in salary. What about the, the question of, what about the question of fairness, sir? So what he's saying, what he forgets to mention on that, that's a double tax. Capital gains and dividends are taxes on money that has already been taxed once before based on income. So a person who's paying an income tax is paying the first level of tax on that money. Then when you pay a capital gains and dividends tax, you're paying that tax again on that money that had earned this. What it does, and when we've done this before, when we've raised capital gains taxes and dividend taxes, we hurt economic growth. We stifle investment in our economy. So if we tax investment in job creation more, you will get less of it. Like I said, this, is, this looks like to me a not a very good sign because it looks like the president wants to move down the class warfare path. Class warfare will simply divide this country more, will attack job creators, divide people, and it doesn't grow the economy. We're, go to budget.house.gov and see a video we've put out that shows a common sense idea that has a lot of bipartisan support in Washington these days to lower tax rates on these things by going after loopholes. Let me, let me, if, if, if I may, use if, the tax shelters, which we want to get rid of. America's financial crisis has been something of an unsatiable monster, swallowing up millions of jobs, homes, and businesses throughout the nation. Yet amid this ongoing economic Armageddon, one industry has remained recession-proof. Private prisons. With more than 2.3 million people behind bars, the United States trumps China, Russia, and the rest of the world in both the number and percentage of people doing time. Where it falls short, though, is being capable of containing such a large population. It's a political dilemma turned cash cow for dozens of corporations creaming profits off punishment. Private prisons make money off of incarceration. The more people they lock up and the longer they keep them, the more money they make. So they have the same perverse incentive to expand our justice system and increase our number of people, our, our number of citizens who are behind bars because it increases their profit margin. The profitability of private jails depends on the prison population continuing to go up. The rate of incarceration in the U.S. has quadrupled since the 80s, when America's war on drugs ushered in the three strikes policy, which ties judges to mandatory minimum sentencing, even for nonviolent offenders. Since the late 80s and into the 90s and now today, um, we see a turn away from that rehabilitative model. So across the country, prison programming is cut, rehabilitation is being cut, um, there's less opportunities for education, to gain work skills, and instead there's just this drive towards isolation, towards punishment. <laughs> Private prison companies are paid between $45 and $130 a day per detainee. Rates for juveniles, women, and immigrants could be higher. While public prisons are accountable to the public, private ones answer only to shareholders and are not subject to external scrutiny. That means many private contractors face few consequences for the poor or even inhumane treatment of detainees. We just see, you know, more and more isolation, sensory deprivation, prisoners who literally never interact with human beings. When guards would come into the facility, there would be a sign out front with their stock price uh, to let them know how the company was doing. Corrections Corporation of America and GO Group are the two largest private prison companies with combined revenues of $2.9 billion last year. But critics say they've been using that financial clout to line their own pockets even further, encouraging politicians to keep going with a heavy-handed sentencing program by launching an influential lobby campaign in the corridors of power. Lobbying in, in order to influence public officials is only a small part of the private prison industry's effort uh, to achieve policy change. Others include campaign donations. So the companies make hundreds of thousands of dollars of donations to politicians nationwide, both on the federal and state levels. With most states and the federal government currently operating under record deficits and budget cuts, private prison companies are pitching their facilities as lower cost alternatives. And while most Americans continue struggling during this economic downturn, mass incarceration may grow even more profitable. 
Marina Portnaya, RT. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, September 19th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, this is ggnonline.com. That's my website, ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, ddarko2012. Uh, you can put your email in there, email address, and uh, you'll know when I post videos. Um, or you can subscribe to ddarko2012 on YouTube. Um, other than that, I have a new poll up, so go and check it out. It says, um, oh, yeah, and also I can see it. Um, I guess it had something to do with a grease monkey, an add-on, so or a plug-in, I think it was, either plug-in or add-on. Maybe the same thing, whatever. Either way, uh, I just went through a bunch of stuff and unclicked it, and, and all of a sudden, um, this worked. So It says here, how likely is it that standards of living will increase for the surf class in the next decade? You have 90% or above, and 70% or above, 50% or above, or just below 50%. And um, so you can go in there and check that out. I'm going to keep moving, cover the economy in this section, and uh, the War of Terror, Reign of Terror, and uh, Police State, Big Brother, Eugenics, and the next one. Although this one kind of has War on Terror, a War of Terror too. It says here, Obama $447 billion jobs bill would create National Infrastructure Bank. I'm only putting this in there because, well, that's the biggest thing in the news right now as far as uh, uh, Barack Obama or whatever is real name is uh, is pushing here. We have Obama predicts his plan will cost $235,000 per job. So it says here uh, at a fundraiser held in a private residence in Washington on Thursday evening that the uh, 447 billion American Jobs Act he has proposed will create 1.9 million American jobs, which works out to be the cost of about 230,263 dollars per job. And now it's uh, now we're talking about a trillion dollar bill, so it's not even called the 447 bill. Now it's changed to some uh, trillion dollar deficit cutting. So okay, so we have here it says here OFMC preview. Fed will take more action. So it said following continued deterioration in economic data, we expect the Fed to take action in the form of a twist in the central bank's portfolio towards longer maturity government bonds. Strategy could buy the Fed some time to see if economic data improves over the coming months. If not, we expect to see some version of QE3 within the next six months. Operation twist, and this is of course from Forex. So. Um, you know, when they say stuff like that, it's worth uh, paying attention to. It says here in North Carolina, we are not sure why Obama got facts wrong on bridges. So it says there um, he came up with a statistic that there's 153 structurally deficient bridges in that state arguing for more federal stimulus spending before another bridge falls. But it goes in there and says that the definition structurally deficient does not mean that they are in any way unsafe. So he goes, they basically go in there and say that there's a... Uh, there's actually uh, 2,696 bridges, not 153 that are structurally deficient. So, And then we move on here. Obama presses for new taxes on wealthy. So it says here, President Obama on Monday offered a plan to reduce the nation's deficit by $3.6 trillion, almost half of which would come from taxes, including new tax on millionaires. He keeps hearing about tax on the rich and the rich and the rich, and I've said this so many times before. I don't consider millionaires rich. I consider the people that run the fucking show, the middle management, the Soroses and all them. Those are the, those are the rich. You know what I mean? It's You have millionaires that are like people that own uh, your local businesses, your quote mom and pop places, those are your millionaires, those the ones that uh, maybe own a little apartment complex or a, maybe a, a house that they rent out and where you're able to keep your privacy and they don't do drug tests and background checks and all sorts of stuff, uh, drug tests and that just to get a freaking room and some worn down house so you can not get uh, messed with while you're, li you know, if you were living on the street because, you know, it's actually illegal to be homeless. So. Anyways, uh, so it's a big uh, war, economic uh, warfare uh, and uh, class warfare, basically. Moving on here, Obama's Postal Service plan would cut Saturday mail. So administration's plan to rescue the Postal Service, see, here we go, would allow the agency to end Saturday mail delivery and sell non-postal products. So it goes on here, and it says that the agency expects to default on the $5.5 billion retiree health payment due at the end of September unless Congress provides relief. Lawmakers have indicated they want to extend the due date for the payment. So moving on here, it says Gallup, um, uh, Obama's approval at all-time low among liberals. We have Tanzania, China to lend country $1 billion for a pipeline. 
China criticizes the U.S. deal to upgrade Taiwan's F-16. So I've covered this before. Russia has dumped 95 percent of its U.S. Treasury bills. Israel, 46 percent. This is recent news. Egypt cancels two three-year bond sales as investors demand high yield. Then we have Generation X heading for poverty line. Uh, Rabo Direct survey reveals one in three gener Generation Xers, uh, as they call it, I hate that, struggling to make ends meet, or at least 2.5 million Aussies feel they are in the red it says that this generation is being weighed down by record debt then we have port authority to sell one billion dollars in taxable debt for world trade center going to uh, boost tolls on uh, bridges and tunnels and trains and it said here do you sell one billion and 40 year debt to help finance construction of the world trade center site and we move on to this because this is uh, going on in a lot of places and get that out of the way tollway okays 87 percent toll increase and this is in chicago 87 percent increase humber bridge this is in the uk and uh england i believe 11 percent toll increase approved and it says here they go ahead it gives an increase uh, the humber bridge toll by 30 percent then it says here a call for planned dartford toll rise and christmas delay then moving on here, uh, we have private schools may shut as parents turn to state sector. Holidays are canceled. Second homes sold to pay fees at ins uh, institutions with uncertain futures. But uh, in Indiana, 4,000 India, uh, Indiana students seek private school vouchers. So, and a lot of them are uh, leaving the public school system in Indiana to uh, take up on these uh, private school vouchers that the state's offering. It says here, Bank of America's backdoor bailout dumping mortgage trash onto taxpayers via Fannie Mae. And it uh, goes on here, and it says the official bailout of the financial system may be over, but the government is apparently far from finished, propping up big banks as evidenced by the news that Bank of America has struck a deal to pump a bunch of near-worthless home loans on U.S. taxpayers. California legislator passes bill to study state-owned bank to study the feasibility of establishing a state-owned bank that would receive deposits of state funds has passed both houses of the legislators now on the desk of Governor Jerry Brown awaiting a signature. So, uh, hail comrades. Fed debates approach as inflation fears grow. Talking about a wrestling over whether the threat of inflation should prevent them from feeding more money to the country to boost jobs. Well, we already covered that. They will. EU debt crisis being used to consolidate political power. And it says here, uh, fears being lead, laid on thick as another crisis is being used in an attempt to consolidate political power. This time, an honored tactic looks like it's now getting the final push in Europe as financial leaders and presidents alike call for the United States of Europe to avert a crisis. And that's right. That was a fine Polish finance minister that said that, and I covered that as well. Credit Swiss pays uh, to end tax probe. So Credit Suisse Group has agreed to pay German authorities 150 million euros to settle a case looking into hidden assets held by German clients. Hmm, so just pay them off and they go away. Like that, Credit Suisse. I need to uh, become a member of there. Uh, it says here, uh, protesters invade New York City financial districts, uh, call for an end to corporate greed favoring the rich. Then Fannie, and it didn't get much coverage either, Fannie and Freddie Mae to raise fees, boosting the fees they charge to lenders a bid to develop more competitive mortgage market. And it says here, foreclosures, uh, foreclosure Uncle Sam and his 248,000 homes. U.S. taxpayers are the biggest owners of repossessed homes. For now, they are stuck with them. It even says, with even more homes towards default, Fannie and Freddie and the federal uh, FHA are looking ways to unload without swamping the already depressed real estate market. Well, let's just unload it on the taxpayers. Remember, we just covered that. America's homeless crisis washes up in Obama's fictional birthplace, talking about Hawaii and the extreme poor. Uh, down and out in L.A. when the middle class goes homeless. We have more Americans uh, sharing a home together in the tough economy. Uh, so middle class going homeless as well. No place like home. Millions of Americans uh, living in long-stay motels. And there's a picture of it. We have homelessness could spread to middle uh, class crisis study warrants. And it already has. Violent crime falls for straight fourth straight year. I wonder why. And it says here, Chicago police stations may be closed to save cash. Texas communities struggle to fund public safety. Talking about police stations. Economy limiting service of local police. So less pigs on the streets. But check this. But it's also this. Boom and Gun sales fueled by politics and the economy. Economy recession sport driven up local gun sales. Then more seeking concealed weapons permits. Then look at this. Child abuse head injuries increased during recession. Well, why? Well, illegal aliens given billions in tax credit by IRS. Or maybe it's because they're eating pet food. Pet food industry enjoys strong sales and weak economy. And that's why the FDA approves it as uh, safe for human consumption. So thank you for joining me. This is GGN and I'm Darko.